Good evening, I'm Alvide Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. Twelve ministers in the Prime Minister's blacklist, last efforts being made to remove ineffective ministers. Nepali Congress President Deoba's disagreement delays cabinet reshuffle. Prime Minister gives directive to call Executive Council meeting of BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences. Congress Mao Center dispute on Vice Chancellor appointment main cause of persisting problem. At least 25 people killed and 20 others injured in a shelling attack in the Russian-held city of Donetsk. Russia denounces the strike as a barbaric terrorist attack against civilians. And Nepal suffers a 64-run defeat against New Zealand in the Under-19 World Cup. Snehit Reddy scores an unbeaten century for the Kiwis. Arjun Kumal top scores for Nepal with 90 runs. Prime Minister Puspakaval Dahal is making last-ditch efforts to change ministers who have not performed well. Meanwhile, Nepali Congress President Sher Badur Deva has not yet agreed to the cabinet reshuffle. Four ministers from CPN Mao Center, four from Nepali Congress, two from CPN Unified Socialist, and two from Janata Samazbadi Party are in the blacklist of Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal. Twelve ministers out of 20 in the cabinet. Being in the Prime Minister's blacklist means that 60% of the minister's performance was not satisfactory. The 60% of the ministers being unsuccessful means that Premier Dahal is unsuccessful. Prime Minister Dahal is now making efforts to reshuffle the cabinet to cover up his failure. Dahal had reached the mindset of reshuffling the cabinet after work execution of many ministers was not satisfactory in the one year of his tenure as Prime Minister. He had given the minister, ministers a month to improve work execution at all the ministries. Premier Dahal is preparing to receive progress reports of the ministries right after this Thursday's National Assembly election. If works at the ministries do not improve by this time, he will decide to reshuffle the ministers. Dahal had also mentioned this after he had arrived home from Uganda today. The Prime Minister has the executive right to sack any minister. However, he cannot take the sole decision as he is leading a government with the support from alliance parties. The main party of the ruling alliance, Nepali Congress's President Sher Badur Deoba, has not agreed to the cabinet reshuffle yet. Nepali Congress is scheduled to hold its Mahasamiti meeting in Kathmandu from 19th to 22nd of February next month. Deoba has the mindset of moving forward after the Mahasamiti meeting analyzes the performance of the government. Meanwhile, a faction within Nepali Congress is putting pressure on Deoba to change ministers right away. CPN Mao Center, CPN Unified Socialist and Janata Samazbadi Party are also ready for cabinet reshuffle. Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal has directed to call for the meeting of the Executive Council to immediately address the issue of Dharan's BP Koirala Institute for Health Sciences. However, the Premier himself, along with Nepali Congress President Sher Badur Deoba, seem to be at the top of the persisting problem. Following the directive, Acting Vice Chancellor at the Institute, Prahlad Karki, left for Dharan this evening and he is expected to call for the Executive Council meeting for tomorrow. In the meantime, Minister for Health Mohan Badr Basnet has said he will call for a meeting of the Senate within 21 days to solve the issue. Acting Vice Chancellor Karki also said the Senate's meeting would be called within 9th of February next month. However, the issue seems tricky as both Nepali Congress and CPN Mao Center are eyeing for the post of Vice Chancellor. A consensus is yet to be reached and all but emergency services at the Institute have been halted for eight days. It has been understood the political, the political for the post of Vice Chancellor is the reason for the ongoing stalemate. Although High Court Biratnagar ordered to open the office of the Vice Chancellor that was padlocked by the Mayor of Dharan Metropolis, Protests by doctors, teachers and staffers have continued. Staffers of the two parties have been holding separate protest programs. Nepali Congress is trying to appoint Dr. Prahlad Karki as the next vice chancellor, while CPN Mao's center wants Dr. Guru Kanal in the post. 
CPN Mao Center has the support of opposition Dr. Sanjeev Sharma, who is close to CPN UML, and Dr. Bikram Shrestha. It has been understood from sources that current acting Vice Chancellor Karki is also lobbying to appoint his wife Sangeeta Bhandari as the Vice Chancellor if he does not get the post. In our public voice segment today we have asked farmers in the eastern Tarai region why they stopped growing jute. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Mall <laughs> We'll take a short break here. We have more news coming up. Former member of the House of Representatives, Ikcharaz Tamang, has been convicted for money laundering. A special court bench of Chair Tek Naran Kumar and members Tej Naran Singh Rai and Murari Babu Shrestha announced their verdict holding Tamang and his wife Sirzana Shakya Tamang along with four others guilty for money laundering. Their sentences will be decided on the next hearing scheduled for 4th of February next month. The six had been alleged of mishandling depositors' money at the Civil Saving and Credit Cooperative. Tamang had been elected to the Second Constituent Assembly from CPNUML. The Investment Board has expedited preparations for the Investment Summit scheduled for 28th and 29th of April. The summit is aimed at making Nepal a hub for investment and the board is doing legwork to finalize project sectors and necessary law amendments. This will be the third investment summit by the board and comes amid lack of investments despite the potential. The board has formed three separate committees for the summit which include the directive committee, the implementation committee and the technical committee. In the previous two editions of the investment summits, pledges were made for investments which were not fulfilled. The board is all poised to amend laws they deem as obstruction to the investments in order to ensure pledged amount comes to the country. Currently, various ministries have been asked to provide them list of potential investment sectors. The board is preparing to keep rail and metro rail as showca showcase for priority. Around 2,000 potential investors are to be invited to the summit and the board has begun discussions with Nepal's ambassador to various nations for the summit's promotion. The board has estimated 80 million rupees will be required to hold the summit. The Agriculture Cooperatives and Natural Resources Committee has directed the government to declare the cooperatives sector as crisis-ridden. The decision was made today as the committee called on the government for reforms in laws at the earliest to solve emerging issues. 
The committee has also directed the government to keep the cooperatives sector in priority list. The committee has highlighted problems in cooperatives emerged after the requirement for central bank's approval for saving and loan transactions was lifted. The committee has asserted the law needs to be corrected and has said the lost savings of depositors should be compensated by the operators of the cooperatives and lenders. In the previous meeting, Registrar for the Department of Cooperatives, Pitambar Ghimire, had said the faulty cooperatives had failed to abide by the department's repeated directives and correspondence. Currently, there are 31,373 cooperatives across the country, out of which 500 are in trouble. The chairperson for Troubled Cooperatives Committee, Kashiraz Dahal, has suggested the need to categorize cooperatives into three types. Dahal also suggested to hold the passports of troubled operators. The Customs Department has reported the market is still shrinking due to lack of demand. Foreign trade shrank in the first six months of the ongoing Nepalese fiscal year by 3.47%. Publishing a report today, the Customs Department highlighted that imports had gone down by 3.9% and exports by 7.23% between mid-July 2023 to mid-January this year. During the same period last fiscal year, goods worth 792.66 billion rupees were imported. This year, imports stand at 768.16 billion rupees. Likewise, exports stood at 80.88 billion rupees this year and was limited to 74.96 billion rupees. The most exported goods so far this year is steel worth at 6 billion rupees, followed by carpet at 5 billion rupees, cardamom worth 3 billion rupees, and tea worth 2 billion. The most imported goods was petrol at 125 billion rupees, followed by steel of 18 billion rupees, mobile phones of 15 billion rupees, and coal worth 10 billion rupees. Overall, foreign trade in the past six months was worth 843 billion rupees and trade deficit stands at 693 billion rupees. According to the Customs Department, the government collected the highest revenue of 49 billion rupees from petroleum products, 4 billion rupees from electric vehicles, 2 billion rupees from smartphones and 2.77 billion rupees from motorcycles. It's now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday, we had asked you, why has the border dispute between Nepal and India reoccurred? 45% voted for A, India's high-handedness, 24% voted for B, lack of bilateral efforts, and 31% voted for C, due to open border. And here's today's question. Why has the Parliamentary Committee directed to operate nursing colleges against the law? Your options are A, not knowing its jurisdiction, B, nexus of middlemen, and C, impractical law. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the international update. At least 25 people were killed in a shelling attack in the Russian-held city of Donetsk. Moscow-installed leader of the region, Denis Pushilin, said a Ukrainian strike, which also injured 20 people, had hit a busy market and that the casualty figures might change. Russia's foreign ministry denounced the strike as a barbaric terrorist attack against civilians. There has so far been no comment from Ukraine on the incident. Donetsk City and parts of the wider region in eastern Ukraine were first seized by Russian-backed forces in 2014, and the area has been partially controlled by Moscow ever since. The city is around 20 kilometers from the front line. Areas near Donetsk City have seen some of the fiercest fighting lately. It has been almost two years since Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, but it has made little progress in recent months. It's time now for another short break. We'll be right back. Sports News. Sports News. 
Nepal suffered a 64-run defeat against New Zealand in their first match under the ongoing Under-19 World Cup in South Africa. Snehith Reddy scored an unbeaten century for the Kiwis, while Arjun Kumal missed out on the opportunity to become the first Nepali cricketer to score a century in international cricket, missing out on the feat by just 10 runs. In the Group D match played at Buffalo Park East London today, New Zealand elected to bat first and posted an impressive total of 302 runs for the loss of 8 wickets in the stipulated 50 overs. Snehith Reddy top scored for New Zealand with a quick fire 147 of 125 balls, smashing 6 sixes and 11 fours and remained not out. Skipper Oscar Jackson also contributed 75 runs to the Kiwi total, while opener Tom Jones added 33. Subhash Pandari was the pick of the Nepali bowlers with three wickets. Gulchan Cha also took two wickets for Nepal, while Dipesh Karnel, Tilak Bhandari and Akash Tripathi all claimed a wicket each. Chasing 303 runs for victory, Nepal managed to score 238 runs in the allotted 50 overs, losing 9 wickets. Arjun Kumal top scored for Nepal with 90 runs off 104 balls, hitting 12 fours. Skipper Dev Kanal also contributed a quick fire 36 off 34 balls, while Subhas Bhandari scored an unbeaten 33. Mason Clark was the most successful Kiwi bowler, grabbing three wickets. Meanwhile, in a Group C match played at the Diamond Oval in Kimberley today, Sri Lanka defeated Zimbabwe by 39 runs. Nepal Police Club defeated Trivan Army Club by 13 runs in an exciting match under the Prime Minister Cup National Cricket Tournament. In the match played at the Siddhartha Cricket Stadium in Bhairava today, Nepal police batted first after losing the toss and were bowled out for 140 runs in 31.4 overs. Sunil Dhamalat top scored for the police team, scoring 52 runs with the help of two sixes and three fours. Sompal Kami with four wickets was the most successful bowler for Trivun Army. Chasing 141 runs for victory, Trivun Army were bowled out for 127 runs in 32.2 overs. Bhim Sarki was the leading run scorer with 52 runs, while Kushal Malla also added 35 runs for the army team. Sagar Thakal and Lalit Rajbangshi were the pick of the Nepal police bowlers, grabbing three wickets each. Nepal police club are in the second spot of the points table with six points from three matches. Sudur Pashim province lead the table with also six points from three matches. Trivon Army are sixth with four points from four matches. Meanwhile, Gandaki province thrashed Koshi province by a huge margin of 142 runs in the Prime Minister Cup National Cricket Tournament today. In the match played at the capital's Mulpani ground, Gandaki were put to bat first and were bowled out for a below par total of 167 runs in 48.2 overs. Gandaki had a disastrous start as they lost five wickets when only 38 runs were on the board in 11.5 overs. They were finally bowled out after posting 167 runs. Muskan Thapa top scored for Gandaki with 67 runs, while skipper Bipin Khatri also contributed 42. Avyas Timilsina, who grabbed six wickets, was the leading wicket taker for Koshi. Chasing a victory target of 168 runs, Koshi had a much worse start than Gandaki and were bowled out for just 25 runs. Wickets kept tumbling in regular intervals after Koshi's first wicket of opener Sonu Ansari fell in the first ball of the innings. Skipper Ankit Subedi was the leading run scorer for Koshi with eight runs. None of the Koshi batters were able to score in double figures as four batters were out for ducks. Bipin Khatri, who grabbed six wickets, was instrumental in bowling out Koshi for such a low score. Gandaki registered their first win in the tournament today while Koshi are winless with six consecutive losses. Gandaki are in the eighth spot of the points table with two points from four matches, while Koshi Province are at the bottom tenth position with no points from six matches. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching.
Good night.